Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be mostly talking about preparing for worlds in 300 Modern, as well as dance around a little bit in the world of Silver Age for that side event. This is episode 430. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back something. Let's attack him. Because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Heroclix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is your Heroclix champion, or Dial H for Heroclix champion, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, soon to be Heroclix champion. Obviously, of, yes. Of the world. <laughs> that is, of course, the intention. Uh, yeah. You know. Okay, right on. What made you happy this last week, man? Oh man, um, not not a lot. It was a rough week. I'm not gonna lie. It was a really rough. So I had a four day weekend, which normally would make me pretty happy. I'd be able to like chill for most of it, but I had to work one day, and then the next day I basically had to work like an eight hour shift. Um, so my sister moved back from Arizona back to Nebraska. And so I had to help her unload her 38-foot U-Haul that was completely oh filled. And man, a lot of DVDs, a lot of books, a lot of very heavy boxes, too many candles for one person to own, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, we filled two, what, like 15 square foot, or not 15 square foot, 15 by 15 storage areas um, with like the stuff from the U-Haul. And so... Yeah, it was a long, long process. Got started at like 9 a.m. and didn't quit until like 5. And at that point, oh, I was gosh. feeling quite defeated. But uh, yeah, I did get like to like, moving, like candle know. after candle. Like, come on, this could at least be <laughs> Euro clicks. No, they were, all, they were all boxed up. So it was like one oh, like 50 pound box. Anymore. Oh, yeah. geez. So heavy. I've never moved Hero clicks that are that heavy because I don't pack them tight. Like, they. They're very loose, so like each hero clicks box I have is like probably ten pounds at the most. Um yeah. but no, it, it made me happy seeing her back in town, getting some food, doing stuff like that. Um but yeah, I guess I'm I'm glad for the weekend to be almost over and uh it'll be a short week at work at least. There'll be three days on, three days off. So there is that oh, to nice. look forward to as well. It is really cool then. Oh short little uh weeks for it. so oh, what made me happy this last week Met up with patreon member james tipton was in home uh in one for the weekend in sioux falls so didn't really need to drive up there but i was like you know what hang out with him you know he goes is in kansas normally which is much further drive in sioux falls so i go up play some clicks hang out uh, so one of the days we ended up going to the state fair this weekend, and I even doubled back, went to it again today, uh, recording this Labor Day, and it was a good time. I got to see a performing arts show, which is just basically a little play with just a ton of different excuses for songs, basically. It's put on by 4-H. I love 4-H. I was in 4-H growing up. It's a great thing for kids to be in. I think it's a really cool, creative, uh, challenging, uh, fun program program for most people to do so gotta do that gotta check out all the 4-h projects that were on the fair got to walk around the fair didn't go on any rides i don't know maybe i'm just at that age where i'm like i don't really need that in my life i don't need to feel like i'm gonna throw up anymore i think i'm good i don't need that thrill i feel alive enough every day i don't i don't need i don't know i don't need that high speed intensity anymore uh but speaking of high speed intensity we also got to see the atv mx bike show which put me right back into my PlayStation 2 days of playing MX versus ATV to some of the best video game soundtrack of all time, uh, aka early 2000s punk rock music. So that was really fun, watching him do like kickflips and whatever. Uh, I don't know. I didn't know half the name. He literally said every single name of all the tricks they did on the MX bikes. But whatever. They jumped him. They went up really high. He was pretty a cool. Of, uh, so. A lot of angles. Be like, oh, yeah, a 270, a 360. 
a 480, like, you know. Bro. Mostly multiples of 90, I think. No one's yeah, like, ah, oh, like sweet 45 you did there. <laughs> yeah. It looked a little awkward. But, uh, the one thing that was really cool probably was, like, the, uh, what is, uh, whatever, it was, like, in the handlebars, and then, like, leaned all the way back, had, like, his butt up off the seat. Like, that was pretty cool. All the no hands, no feet, kick type stuff. One dude did, like, finger guns at the crowd as his no hands thing. That was kind of funny. Yeah, that was cool. And it was free, which is dope. So, like, that was a free show. Also, in the State Fair, there's just tons of people on the different music stages doing mostly bad covers of, uh, of songs. There were some... It's mostly just, like, dudes. By dudes, I mean, like, dads. Like, 40, 50-year-old dads that just want to start a band, I guess. And so we had some... Uh, some Johnny Cash covers, some Elvis covers. Pretty fun. Someone did Jukebox Hero. It sounded nothing like it, but I was like, those are those are the words, though. But that is so not any part of the tune, song, rhythm. Wrong but those are the words. Yeah, it was it was just so like off. Instead and I of guess Jukebox Hero, it's like he was a jukebox hero, and you're like, nah. Yeah, it was, was kind of like that. Wrong. I don't. That just hurts my brain. But it was really weird. It was like, now nah, those are all the words. I guess they made it their own. I don't, <laughs> I don't know the best way to like make it a compliment and say that. But yeah, yeah some covers cool. do it well. Some, some oh, just yeah. feel wrong. Like on the offset, there's like, I there's a couple songs that I have that definitely like there's cover versions of. Um, I mean, the Grateful Dead's a good example. Uh, Dire Wolf sure. is both done both done by Mickey Hart, who uh, is a member of the band, and then also Jerry Garcia, like obviously member of the band. The Jerry yeah. Garcia version, much slower tempo, and I appreciate that one. I like that one a lot more than the Mickey Hart one's like an upbeat tempo, and he sings it faster, and I hate it because my timing's off, and I try and sing along, and I'm like, what are you oh, doing? Oh, you're not used to what that version doing, Mickey? Like what's happening here. Yeah. Some of those covers I do dig. A lot of Nightcore covers. I don't know if you know what Nightcore is, I mean, like They do a lot of really cool covers. They basically just like speed it up, get higher. It's like basically what they do for like 90% of the covers they do. But like, I kind of dig those. Yeah, it was a fun time. Had some pork on a stick wrapped in bacon. Had a gyro. Had some good fair food. Did not have the fried Jeez, Oreos stink. and Reese's. Oh. Oh, I skipped There's out on a, that. The fried... The fried... Um cheesecake i'm always like i don't think i saw that here that at the south work? dakota state like fair. they keep it extremely cold and then batter it and fry it really quick i think i don't know it had it used to have fried cheesecake in the brick house in vermilion which i don't think we ever ate there but it had like little fried cheesecake bites that you would and like chocolate oh, or sure. strawberry like syrup and that was actually really really good um, but i don't think we had any fried cheesecake at the fair yeah i don't, yeah, I don't think so not this time I have had fried a, Oreos before, fun. and to me, they just taste like uh, soft Oreos with, like, breading. They just get kind of softer yeah, by being fried and not as crunchy, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Probably, I've never had one, but, like, the, what's the version of Oreo that's basically, like, a sponge cake? Oh, a cakester. A cakester, yeah. Yeah, it's probably actually, that same consistency. Those just came back within the last year. Just cool for me. I, I loved Oreo Cakesters. I don't know how many people remember them or not, but when I was a kid, that used to be like my favorite, like, growing up, go to the gas station, like, Ma, please, can I have an Oreo Cakester? And they stopped them seven, eight years ago or something, maybe 10 years, maybe it's been way longer, 10 years ago or something. They just brought them back. Maybe now that I'm an adult, it's just like, eh, I can just buy it now. It's not as special. Maybe it doesn't taste as good for that reason. I don't know, but it's like, eh, not yeah. really what I'm reading Most of those, anymore. like, Debbie kind of things... Those little like snack whatever things right. stop tasting good as an adult, and I'm like, I don't know if it's just because they started producing them in mass and like dropped the quality, or if my taste as an adult just simply won't allow me to enjoy stuff like that. It's changed. You can no longer have fun treats you used to enjoy. Yeah, exactly. Get your broccoli and be happy. Oatmeal cream pie cakes, whatever they are. Yeah, oatmeal cream pies. Oh, um, sure. Sure tasted a lot better back when they were twenty five cents. Now they're like pushing two dollars. So yeah. nah. No, thank you. No, thank you, please. But all right. We got to prepare for worlds, and with that comes a lot of news that is around uh legalities and all sorts of fun stuff.
do the the tarot Let's cards do, or do you want to do the, the erratus? I would say the erratus first because tarot cards okay. helps us get more into world. So yeah, yeah. those erratus. So the erratus. Um, this is for X Men X of Swords storyline organized play and uh, well, yeah, the the organized play and the like the main set I believe. I think this covers both sections. Just double checking here. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so for X of Swords we have um, number zero four zero in the set. Emma Frost. She has an errata that is diamond form slash original form free if emma frost began your turn on the map replace her with another character with this trait on the same click number and then her counterpart the 100 set number 100 emma frost diamond form original form free if emma frost began your turn on the map replace her with another character with this trait on the same click number so these two can swap between each other um what was the original i don't know what the original wording was because now i'm yeah, now I'm interested. I'm invested. So the original wording was free replace Emma Frost with the 100, number 100 Emma oh, Frost. Sure. On the same it wasn't that if she began your turn on the map. Right. So just let you, you could have infinitely since it's a yeah, different I free action. So. I don't um, know. Yeah. Something like that. Um, or at least you could have switched it twice, I guess, in one turn. Um, next up is the Mercy Muramasa, all the swords in the set, all the, all the sword objects. These equipment are classified as sword equipment. Ya dummies. Y'all knew this, knew these were sword equipment the whole time. Uh, but yeah, WizKids officially clarifies that these are sword equipment and should all have sword equipment printed after their names. I guess and for those people that really like to exploit any little minor anything yeah, and can't just be like... It. You, you got, like, this yeah. minutia, like, text that was wrong, and you really want to, like, find a way to ruin everyone's happy time. Um, but, yeah, yeah, WizKid swoops in and says, no, 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 you fools. Uh, and the next up is... The way is... it was implied is the way it was supposed to work. <laughs> what a crazy right. idea. Yeah, it's, it's played exactly as anyone with, you know, good reasoning skills would have said that it was supposed to be played. Um, the Legacy Card Apocalypse is next up. So he has a special speed power... That is, go forth, my horsemen, charge, stealth, and then power, choose one effect. Place all of Apocalypse's horsemen bystanders on the map adjacent to him, or generate a horseman bystander. So the difference with this one being the the first half of that speed power. So originally this said, um, power, choose one effect, place all horsemen bystanders adjacent to Apocalypse, which... Oh, sure. People could like, be I, because they all get horsemen in their name. It could be like crazy if you're playing multiple apocalypses. You could place all all of, of every apocalypse's horsemen bystanders next to him. This one specifies all of apocalypse, meaning like this one in specific, and like the bystanders are unique to him. So uh, even if you're playing multiples now, you will only be able to power action place them adjacent to one. So there's that, and then I don't know if there was. Any confusion on uh, place all horsemen bystanders adjacent to Apocalypse? I don't know if there's any confusion on whether that meant generate all of them. I like don't know. Maybe there's somebody that was really trying to push for that. Maybe not. But that. I mean, we do have people that were arguing that sword equipment wasn't sword equipment because it didn't say so. So it's possible that that argument was there, but uh, now it can't be. So that's for the main set. Yeah. Same page is working for me, so I can go ahead and jump <laughs> yeah. in here. Thankfully, my computer did not freak out and we have to start re-recording or something but uh there's some small fixes that are not incredibly important like the fury the character's card should indicate its standard power is lime green for exploit weakness right a solemn and none of the adamantium these, skin for the uh the record none of these will be right none of this is worlds. legal for worlds yeah, legal yeah for the worlds. OP kit stuff is not legal goodness uh solemn's adamantium skin should obviously have the indomitable symbol instead of the straight symbol an interesting one the white priestess should have the mystics team ability listed that's kind of cool um, doesn't have that in the like, the green priestess that never has it but does she have it in the main set the white priestess i don't think so i don't believe so zero yeah. zero six no she doesn't yeah. I, she is 40 yeah. points like in the so she's 15 oh, points sure she's more, more in the um op set i mean longer dial different power set but yeah she is more points in the main set the fun one here big tarn the uncaring uh change 
Leadership, uh, it's his, to me, my Locust File trait. Leadership, when Tarn the Uncaring uses it and succeeds, choose one, generate a Locust File, or place all of Tarn the Uncaring's, all of Tarn the Uncaring's Locust File by standards on the map adjacent to him. A same thing with the Apocalypse. We weren't going to yank other Locust File by standards to this Tarn. Only this, specifically, Tarn the Uncaring's Locust File by standards placed adjacent to him. Oh, cool. Uh, Captain Avalon. His character's card should read. He has a point value of 70 slash 45 points. That's the main 036 set. The 201 should have a point value of 75 points. And then he did have a problem with the you roll a d6 and you, sh- you get this power to the to your next turn. And it was like at the beginning of your turn or something like that. So it's like Battle Fury, Willpower. Yeah, um, so like Willpower. You couldn't never use Willpower. Yeah, it would have never worked. If it was old Willpower, right. it would have worked. But it didn't since it was like a free. Uh, to roll the d6 or whatever. But now it's you get it until the end of your next turn, which is good. Like, you know, whatever. You can actually roll for willpower with this. Uh, the 209 Apocalypse, Krakow is for all mutants. When determining theme teams, characters with the Arako keyword gain the X-Men keyword. When a friendly character with the X-Men keyword would hit hit with a close attack, you can use Blades Cross Fangs, they may roll d d6. If they do, and the result is greater than the attacker's printed damage value, and they evade the attack. Uh, I guess the the was missing. They evade the attack. For some reason, that's the only change in this whole text. So that's just like, all right, whoopsies. Yeah, well, let's see, um, the attackers printed attack value. They evade the attack. Maybe they already just fixed it or assumed it know. somewhere else. But like the yeah, red is highlighted in this one for weird. whatever reason. When a friendly character with the X Men keyword would be hit with close attack if the blade's close fangs roll six. Result is greater than the attacker's printed damage value. They evade the attack. Oh, the way it was worded, it makes it sound like the opponent evades the attack. Ah. Um, or something. That would be weird, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It would make no sense. Yeah. Um, interesting. And then, of course, that has a very similar change where it's sort of might, sword, 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 sword. All of these swords have sword equipment printed after their names. You know, that they're sword equipment. Pretty cool. Grass Cutter gets a little bit of a change. Blades Claws Fangs, when this character uses it, you may instead use one of the dice in the attack roll as your d6 result. Interesting. I think it just said attack because roll is the red word here for the change. Soul Sword, this was pretty good. People were talking about some pretty crazy uh, black heart shenanigans with the Soul Sword. So the effect now reads if this character already has, so it gives you Blaze Claws, Fangs, Mystics. If this character already has Mystics, once per turn when they deal damage from that team ability, choose one. Deal two penetrating damage instead or also heal a click. I think it was just when they deal damage from that team ability, you could deal two penetrating damage or heal a click which would be right. insane making characters uh, now it's one per turn and mix mystics basically they hit their stop click mystics triggers then they heal and so, yeah it would make a lot of characters really hard to cut through without yeah. specific stuff that's designed to cut through like stop clicks um exactly now you can uh, actually swarm and kind of get through stuff versus just being absolutely annihilated by the soul sword that would be oh ooh, shudder how gross that'd be who pen every turn sorry Heal every time. Ugh, so gross. So that is the Radas so far. Like Simeon said, only those first ones are actually going to be, you know, used in world since the OP kit, OP kit stuff is not yet legal. But still good to know. Get it all the way through in this one segment. However, some more stuff that is going to be important for worlds is old Christopher Martinez, uh, head judge here for worlds, commented, not commented, excuse me, made a post in Hero Host players and correctors around the world. If you're not already aware of this, it's a Facebook group. It's got 6,400-ish members in it. So if you are into Hero Clicks and kind of want to know more stuff about it, I don't think we've ever shouted it out before, definitely join the Hero Host players and collectors around the world group. It does a good job, I think. There's a lot of fun posts in there. I feel bad. I scrolled past a post earlier today about some dude who was going to go visit Rapid City, <laughs> South Dakota. I oh, wanted man. to know where the Hero Clicks was. And I was like, oh, no, I definitely could have helped him if I had just seen it. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I normally um, like to like stop at those posts because, um, more often than not, I know at least one person from like that area or state, and so right. I like to like tag whoever I know from like around there. It makes me feel important. Yeah, it's like I'm helping. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Chris... I did send someone to your Discord to like the South Dakota oh, nice. Discord. Um, That's good. From I think it was from Reddit. Um, I don't remember. Oh, cool. I, I want to say it was Andrew, uh... but I don't think it was Andrew. I don't think so. Uh, so Andrew, some not person. Andrew Klinger, right? Have you no, right? yeah, I don't. Be, I don't think that was actually who it was. I, I want to take claim for him, but I can't. Probably, it would be um, a good player to take claim for. He's a good guy, right? Blame you. 
No, but Chris Martinez says this is a big, uh, big splurge post about tarot cards, legality. Simi and I answered a question last week for some people we thought would get kicked out or disqualified because of tarot cards. I guess the answer is going to be none, and let's get into that. So the World's Championship at Great Slam is coming out. I'm just going to read verbatim here. In a few weeks, and I just wanted to clear up some tournament legality issues that have been brought to my attention. Specifically, I want to clarify questions about the game elements that you bring. I think players get a bit frazzled over the status of their figures, and I just want to let everyone know that having a damaged or slightly broken figure is okay. We don't care if your figure is missing a piece or if it's scuffed up. As long as it's clear to all what the figure is and the dial sticker and the dial base are, le- are sorry, legible and correct, then you don't have to worry about what we won't let you use that that we won't let you use it. So this is cool. So if you have a figure that's like missing a hand or missing a head or something like pretty I literally standard damage in 2018 worlds played against people that were playing <laughs> two by two mighty Thor figures that were just ankles. There is like oh, oh yeah at least one carnage at least one Mangog. You know, at this point, in my opinion, it could just be a base. And as long as your opponent is aware of what it is and where it's at, it yeah. should technically be legal. Uh, although I will say, like, I've definitely forgotten something was on the board because it was just a base. So, like, we oh, played yeah. a Battle Royal and somebody pulled, uh, what was it, Prime Captain Marvel from Secret Wars? That's, like, the vampire hypersonic uh, steel energy one. Uh, okay, she yeah. had completely broken off the base, and he was like, he just played it as was, and I completely forgot it was on the like the map, and got messed up by it. But yeah, I don't, I don't you know at what point, least at what percentage of, of figure still on the dial, or like sculpt still viewable, do yes. they call it like you know too much? I guess he's saying as long as it's clear to all what figure it is. So it's like I can definitely tell. That's Spider Man. <laughs> I don't know. I guess. Right. Like, look, he's missing his webs, but he, we can tell that the the red and the blue is there. Or like it's Batman. It's like, hey, look, you know, he doesn't have any arms, but like that's his cape. You know, that's <laughs> Batman <laughs> or something. Yeah, it's him oh, crying over dead parents we'll or something. Have to see. It might. Be, yeah. <laughs> see, he's in the fetal position with tears running down his face. That's that's Batman. Anyways, the next paragraph here, he says, I want to make it clear that no one is going to get disqualified over any minor issue like that. He just can say it's minor, I guess. So I know you're all excited to play and hope to win the big event, but the world's champ is going to get there by building a good team and playing it to the best of their ability. Probably getting some great die rolls. Yeah, facts. No one is going to win by trying to get all their opponents disqualified unless they're cheating, of course. So please don't do that. We have a strict please don't cheat policy at Worlds. (laughs) I like it. Um, then he says, we look forward to seeing everyone here uh, and all the best of luck. And he made an edit and this is all kind of brought up in regards to tarot cards. So this is kind of the biggest clarification. Hey, y'all, good questions were brought up in regards to tarot cards. We are not going to demand sleeves, but we highly recommend using them to keep your cards in good condition. As far as damage cards are concerned, it will come down to a case-by-case basis during force verification. If the card is very obviously damaged or marked, then we may not allow you to use it. Sleeves would help this matter. Please yeah, so if you have like a giant like flag on certain cards, it's like <laughs> do, 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 do. that's very obviously marked. Yeah. What do they consider very obvious? Like so, <laughs> there's no way this is like a case by case basis, which he literally says. Uh, he does. So I can't yeah. complain too much, but when a card is very obviously damaged or marked, it's like well, I would consider like a tarot card with like any kind of scratch that I could see from across the table as obviously marked Obvious. or damaged. Like one I of think those. Maybe two. if like a corner or something is beat up, you know, they'll yeah. be like, all right, whatever. But I mean, but if, there's like a crease in it or yeah, something like the problem is obvious. If I'm cheating and they're in my hand, they're next to me. I'll be able to oh, see sure. more damage than you will. So I can make it as like lightly obvious as I want. And it'll still be obvious to me, maybe not obvious to you. And then if you call a judge, it's like, well, that's not obviously damaged or marked. That's just like a crease. Yeah. It's like, good. My plan has worked. There, I don't know. There might be it's, some weird it's scuffles rough. and like. I feel, yeah, I feel like there are arguments happening because of it. Like, I don't know, dude. Like, clearly yeah. that corner is bent. And it's like, well, what? What do you want me to do, huh? Like, start to gaslight your opponent. So what? <laughs> My bent, advice. All right, it happens. My advice is like, literally, if you plan on playing tarot cards, um, you know, buy the ones that you want, trade for the ones that you want, whatever. As soon as you get them in your possession or before they're even shipped to you, you know, maybe 
send the person some extra money to put them in a sleeve, a, like a hardcover sleeve. And like, I don't know. I just, I feel like having them constantly sleeved, always sleeved, you'll never have this issue. Um, alternatively, even though like I'll let you finish Calder cause he does mention this, I yeah. think at some point, um, having a like blacked out back of the sleeve or something like that to like cover the back of the card on all the cards would sure, also yeah. fix this situation. Like obviously you can mark that as well. You can like damage that as well in some way, but it'd be a lot more noticeable if you damaged like a piece of plastic than a piece of cardboard. So very true. Uh, so yeah, he does really quick says note that if we determine a card has a mark that would cause an unfair advantage, we reserve the right to require that card not to be used. The worst penalty will be that you can't use your deck. If you can't make a legal deck, you'll still be able to use the rest of your force. So even if it's like one or two cards, this is how I'm kind of interpreting it. One or two cards look damaged enough that they say they're marked. They'll be like, hey, look, make a different wands card or something and put it in there. You know, make a legal deck. All right, be legal. If you can't make a legal deck, you just can't use your tarot card deck. So use the rest of your team. That to me sounds pretty fair. No one's yeah. going to get disqualified over using tarot cards. They're just going to not be allowed to use them. You know, use them responsibly or don't use them at all. Seems pretty cut and clear to me and i think that's a pretty yeah, fair way to do I it i will also say i'm glad they're going this route where like at worst they're going to ban your deck and you still get to play your 300 modern team you know technically unless you're playing tarot the figure the tarot deck probably adds enough randomness where it's not going to guarantee you a win and even like with tarot being able to draw two cards it's not going to like help you guarantee a win it's just going to like help you guarantee certain cards at certain points um, I will say at the the part of the comment where he said no one is going to win by trying to get all their opponents disqualified. That is yeah. a thing. So like if you if you're listening to this and you've never played in like a different trading card game or like a different uh, collectible game, um, winning by getting your dis- your opponent disqualified for like a small rules thing is absolutely a way to win in like Magic. It's not really oh, looked highly so upon, obviously. But you can, you can be like, hey, I like I like, you know put my deck here, and then my opponent like touched it, and like you know that's like grounds for disqualification. It's called like angle shooting yeah. when you do stuff like that. When you intentionally allow or like kind of like put your opponent in a situation to light cheat, and then like in their tournament rules, you get them banned. So or not banned, but uh, disqualified for that match. So I am glad that they're saying that like no one's going to get disqualified for this and then at most you're just going to get your tarot card removed that will suck for anyone that's like genuinely just got like a scuffed card or something um i will say if there's anyone at worlds like i'll probably have my full like for what is legal for worlds tarot deck with me um so if anyone ends up needing to replace a card like mid worlds like there will be borrowable ones i'm obviously assuming that like the other people will have secondaries or whatever as well uh because like anyone that's honestly trying to win and like playing honestly right. will probably have like a backup card or two backup you know like whatever they'll have like some backups or access to them um, not saying that like not saying you have to buy two of every card just in case your opponent makes you remove one but in all honesty I think enough people take this game to the serious to the point where if they're playing honestly, then they'll probably have like backups on like the ready because it will change teams. Like losing a tarot card deck is something that can make some teams just run real different. And uh, I think you'll see that when we talk about like what kind of teams that we are possibly going to play at worlds. Yeah, no, Absolutely. Is an excellent segue. So this last week there were some Bradcast events. I played in his Tuesday event last week. I also played, like I said earlier, locally in Sioux Falls, which is again another 300 modern. So kind of messed around what I'm building currently with worlds. I go into my build. We can go into Simeon's build. We can talk about him a little bit there. Um, but I love 76. I love Soldier 76. <laughs> Soldier 76. Well, yeah, I did play him a little bit too when that game was actually relevant. It is no longer anymore. But Spider-Man 1776 is a super fun character, and I loved playing him when he came out. I still think he's really solid now. Uh, it's just not, ha automatically minus one action total sucks to be you. I think making you hit is not that bad of a change. I think more people should play him. He's not necessarily slept on, but on on the way of the, the Dodo, there's like, ah, oh, well, he was changed. Never play him again. So... You know who is obviously, on, yeah. Robespierre Riley. 
the guillotine spider-man of oh my of gosh that's Robert. right <laughs> it's right <laughs> forgot about guillotine spider-man uh and then uh u.s agent I really wanted to play u.s agent on this team since i love like both versions of john walker that we have at disney plus u.s agent just looked super awesome with the full speed charge so the team is Spider-Man 1776, U.S. Agent, the Hal Jordan Green Lantern from Wonder Woman at full points, Double Marvella, Sakarian Iron Man, and then Mary Jane, and then two Sentinel bystanders from the Master Mold Sentinel, since they do have their own unique number, and I'm playing them both at the 2 version, 002, so that's the sidestep close combat expert version, which I think is really good. They're giant 2 by 2 pieces of blocking terrain, basically, that get in the way and you know john walker can see them so if they die bada bing bada boom choose a power makes it pretty easy uh i got the cloak on the team for sakari and iron man and then i have captain carter's shield for green lantern he helps give everybody you know he's defending a 20 then he drops the mitt gives everybody esd uh john walker already has combo reflexes sakari and iron man already gets a plus two defense putting sakari and iron man at like a 23 from everywhere or sorry, I guess 22, same thing, John Walker, 22 from everywhere. I have two perplexes, you know, Sakari Iron Man, and then 76. So we can make uh, 76 a 22. We can make just Green Lantern a 21 just to help him out so he doesn't get, you know, damaged. That's another big thing. But that's the team I'm mostly running. It's fairly standard. You know, Paparazzi can die. The Mick can die. The Sentinels can die. John Walker can choose powers. A Marvella can die. Totally fine. Basically, if almost anything dies i'm pretty cool with it we have four pretty solid attackers sky and iron man being a great attacker john being an awesome attacker after some stuff goes down green lantern solid not super easy to ko and then again spider-man 1776 when he gets in the thick of it still a charge blades perplex piece also a fine attacker john uh, green lantern plus 76 already having stop clicks makes us a pretty tough team with the high defenses stop clicks damage reduces all this good stuff makes it a pretty tough team to uh to wipe score points on it has not yet been wiped which is nice so that's pretty cool but uh, that is currently my team i can get into some whatever builds and how tournaments went later but simeon what are you building right now for 300 modern all right so yeah i haven't been able to participate in any like big uh 300 modern kind of stuff um but i do have like an eye out there so i'm obviously i think really in love with the combo of Sakari and Iron Man and Mad Jim. So oh, yeah. that's Sakari and Iron Man starting the game unequipped and then Mad Jim power action giving him the cloak. Turn one, he can then sidestep and move action, grab two light objects, um, having both equipped. So he's plus two, what is it? Yeah, plus two to all combat values, can pick two powers and is equipped my first turn. Like whether I go first or second, like... That's just awesome to like already be out of the gate, ready to go. Uh, and I only have to do one action token to get all of that stuff. Um, next up is, so that's that's an easy 85 points. Mad Jim, you know, obviously uh, barrier with two markers for free. Uh, and then perplex, incapacitate, like that kind of stuff. He can also swap things. Like if for whatever reason, I might need to swap. He can do that. Uh, so next up is my... The Super Air Deadpool. I really like this guy. I think he fits on every team. And whenever I break theme, which is probably any time I'm building nowadays, because uh, Mad Jim is just like so fluid and goes on so many things that I'm breaking theme a lot for for that guy. Uh, but Deadpool, he drops water for water terrain markers. Anyone that's next to him gets the dolphin dolphin movement symbol. Adjacent friendly characters, like anyone. Uh, at the end of your turn, you can heal him one click. Probably doesn't happen too often. I did in, add in the uh, U.S. Agent's shield to throw on Deadpool. So, Oh, nice. On the off chance, you know, he's got dolphin, dolphin symbol himself. So on the off chance that they're trying to shoot him from within, like, four squares, you know, hopefully you've got some follow-up. Hopefully he hits a super senses. But more often, they're going to just charge in. And on that chance, he's got, like, a 20 with super senses a 20 printed defense with super 18 with combat reflexes and super senses so 20 effectively good yeah um, especially with the whole fish symbol stuff that's yeah, solid yeah i feel like that's a solid equip it is a little hard to equip him with the rest of the team though um so then i've got annihilation i really like annihilation i really like annihilation combined with sicarian iron man so i really like annihilation also combined with mad jim jaspers this is the chase that we pulled in our brick um 
So she has leadership when she uses it. Friendly characters with the Araco keyword within three squares are considered to be adjacent to her. That's probably not going to happen at all. Actually, yeah, I can almost guarantee that's never going to happen in this game. Uh, but then at the beginning of your turn, you generate a Damon bystander. These things are really good. They're, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, 10 for 3, 11 for 3. 11 for uh, 3, exploit. yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're an 11 for 3 um, with charge, quake, 17 with invincible, and 3 damage exploit. So, pretty solid. Uh, she's only 70 points, and she's got a fairly long dial. She's not protected out wit, so that's like her one weak point. She does have perplex, so I've got two perplexes on the team now. Um, and then Deadpool, I guess, also has a perplex, so I've, I've got three, three whole perplexes on this team. Hope they're not playing the mission point card that gives them points for perplex. Um, and then when Annihilation is KO'd, I can choose a friendly character to get the uh, make the Damon bystander thing, which is awesome for Sakari and Iron Man, since he can pick things like, I don't know, um... Let's say we'll do like mastermind and then he'll also like generate them. And then he can also have like a defense power, like invincible. And so if you do hit him, he's just going to mastermind it to the Damon bystander. And then uh, he also has plus two like stats. And then even if you get through all of that, he still just does like takes one unavoidable damage. Uh, and then finally, to really wrap up the team, the actual last costed point figure is going to be the legacy card apocalypse at a hundred points. Um, so mm. yeah, yeah, this guy, he's obviously got, he's got two big traits and then he's got, uh, it starts with a speed power and damage power. He doesn't get the special defense power that this apocalypse has. So his speed power is charge stealth and then power choose one effect, place all horsemen bystanders on the map adjacent to apocalypse or generate a horseman bystander. Um, and then he has Empower Enhancement and Probability Control, which is really solid for this team. Really helps everyone out a lot. He's colossal, so he can see everyone to prob. Uh, his Charge Stealth combo with uh, Deadpool, making him potentially like a fish giant, fish colossal, is pretty good. Uh, especially at the 100-point line where he's you know not very long dial, but you can keep him yeah. a little bit more protected by that. And then... Uh, he obviously has the horseman trait. His like hour of your glory is at hand, my horseman. Bystanders on this card are horseman bystanders and have max one. At the beginning of your game, at the beginning of the game, you may generate a horseman bystander. When Apocalypse crosses a starting line after resolutions, you may generate any horseman bystander. He's not going to cross any starting lines, but you do get one at the beginning of the game, which is great because you can pick, um, let's see... The, the hypersonic one i think it's death yeah you can pick death. death yeah so then you're going to be able to equip deadpool also more perplex that. on your team for your yeah. opponents totally perplexed tarot card for mission yeah points. <laughs> you're giving them all the uh all the mission points if they have that tarot card in play this is simeon's counter he didn't want you to know but yeah, now we know it is the, the one hard turn to this team uh Obviously. but no like so that was apocalypse actually does allow you to one turn equip somebody um, by dropping that like hypersonic bystander going picking up a you know special object and dropping it back in your starting area so I really like that and then he has traded leadership mastermind shape change leadership is always big um, obviously annihilation also has it but she's a little squishier than apocalypse in my opinion uh, the mastermind shape change is pretty good for sticking pound, sticking around power. And then uh, when Apocalypse uses leadership and succeeds, you may instead generate a horseman bystander, which I would gladly do in most circumstances. When Apocalypse uses mastermind, friendly characters within range are considered to be adjacent. So pretty, pretty awesome. Um, next, uh, for so for this team, that's my 300 points. I think Apocalypse yeah. is mostly just pumping out bystanders at 100 points. Uh, he does have charge, blades, stealth, but really he's like the support, like a little expensive on the support side, 100 points, but empower enhancement, prob, control. I've got my Sakari and Iron Man doing most of the damage. My bystanders so, doing yeah. a lot of damage. Annihilation pops out bystanders. Apocalypse pops out bystanders. There's no end to them either, as long as those characters are alive. Even when like Annihilation dies. Just, they muddy up the field yeah. a lot. 
where it's like your opponent like line of fire and stuff egging for pulse wave for sure with all those oh, bystanders on the field yeah party no. thor yeah does like have a fun time with this team <laughs> he would um, he would probably like that a lot the tarot cards that i would go with this team so i'd go with a five tarot card deck because i think there's a very fun easy like tarot pick for this deck uh, or for this team so major arcana is the high priestess it's once per turn each player may re-roll a d6 in a friendly character's roll so that's my leadership on Apocalypse or Annihilation sure. or, like, whatever. Probably Apocalypse. If I don't hit it the first time, make a Bystander. Um, the Seven of Cups. So Cups obviously being defense. This is when a character uses Mastermind, they may choose a friendly character within six squares instead of adjacent. I am mostly having that on there just for Apocalypse. I don't think anyone else on this team uses Mastermind, but it's mostly on there for him just on the off chance that... Uh, there's somebody like outside of his line of fire or something like that then i've got the seven of pentacles which is speed power so this is characters can't use improved movement abilities oh i should say mad jim is power action bringing in the uh cloak of levitation for sakari and iron man i think that's right. obvious at this point but if it has yeah. to be said then yeah he's he's using his uh power action so he can free swap objects you mentioned uh, that. Yeah, characters can like swap, but then power once per game, I can put it on Sakari and Iron Man. It's going to be the cloak, which is plasticity, sidestep, flight. Uh, so the Seven of Pentacles will give characters with plasticity uh, free move at half speed, which gives Sakari and Iron Man, you know, I don't have any TK on this team, but it gives him a, uh, let's see, half speed would be five plus two, so seven square free move. And then, you know, charge, running shot, hypersonic, whatever else he picks. Uh, plus his normal sidestep. So gives him quite a bit of reach when that card's dropped. The Six of Swords is the next one in the deck that I picked. And this is when a character uses Incapacitate after resolutions. They made... Nope. That is not what I meant to put. That <laughs> I wanted to put the, uh, the Super Strength one. Um, it is a sword. So... While I track it down, um, it is the sword that when you use super strength... Okay, five of swords, not six of swords. Um, when this character uses super strength, when a character that can use super strength is given an action, doesn't have to be an attack, doesn't have to be anything specific, just when they're given an action, after resolutions, they may generate a standard object for them to immediately hold. Uh, this is great because if there's a turn where Sakari and Iron Man like, has no objects on the field anymore... He can just pick super strength and move, and he already gets like an object. And then he can pick, yeah. You know, hopefully, he has an object, I guess, because if he doesn't have an right. object, he can't pick super strength. But you know, if he has to move, pick up an object, he can um, pick super strength and like potentially get more objects when he does that. So I can go from one equipment to two or one held object to two with Sakari and Iron Man with this card in play and then finally uh the queen of wands this is when a character rolls for an effect using a single d6 increase the result by plus one so this works for deadpool super senses this works for apocalypse's leadership um for anyone's blades all that kind of stuff uh for willpower rolls you know anything like that it's pretty handy and it's my entire turn my opponent's entire turn uh, when a character rolls for an effect using a single d6, so I get a bunch of rolls like with a plus to it. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, I will say, I think Mad Jim is like the weak point of the team, but like Deadpool's the technically there for that protection. Yeah, I've bit. seen a handful of modern teams, like a few games that at the broadcast, and then also in Rainbow last Friday. And Mad Jim does like ten. I mean, he still does his stuff. Like he still does his thing, but then he is really. Yeah. KO. It's just super senses. There's no I, stop. I click. really do think you know. with three perplexes and annihilation, I think being able to pick which sword annihilation gets, because I can start equipped with any and then switch to any, basically. Yeah, at the beginning of the game, just whenever. Just I mean, like kind of how gems were. Also potentially whatever switch gem. to um, like any of the Disney Plus objects too, I believe. So if it becomes like a thing where you know, I need like the dark hold instead of like the seducer blade or whatever. 
or I need the Muramasa or like the black bone or whatever, it, like the case may be. I think it's a pretty solid option with Mad Jim being able to like swap and power action the same turn. And then if he dies, he kind of, you know, doesn't really matter after that point because he's done his two big things. Yeah, like, all right, I'm cool. I'm done. No more need. <laughs> So yeah, like I've seen quite a few games be like just a Mad Jim KO or just like a Venom Magneto KO or something. It was weird how many times I saw like loser thirty five points. I was like, oh no, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what those are. It's rough. I mean, buddy. it's better but, than that yeah. uh, the time and point in here clicks where it was like loser three points, three points. Very true. No yeah, kidding. And I score card. three yeah. points. You could literally Scored. just not do anything. Your opponent called in an ID character and you'd win because of that. I had seen yeah. it more often than true. I would have liked to, but Very true. Oh, solid team. I I am loving that Legacy Apocalypse. The toughest thing it seems is like getting your hands on one <laughs> right now. Yeah. He's going for a hefty amount. It's uh I will say, almost two hundred bucks. The thing is Plus that the, figure the Legacy being for for years now, for quite a few years now, that was a collector figure. He was not any good to actually own and like play. Makes sense. Makes because sense. I mean, quite. a quite literally um let's see if i can pull up the original yeah he only had a 500 point line so Ooh, quite gross. literally almost unplayable until this legacy card like uh, i won't basically. say he was bad i'm just gonna say you would have at most done like a boss battle once every like six months with him yeah. and that'd be like if you really liked him which most we people played did. 500 golden or something. It's like, oh, I can finally play my exactly. Apocalypse. And like, even then, when you're doing like 500 golden, like, there's all these 300, 200 point characters that you might look at first. Yeah, you'd probably um, rather play. I've owned one for one, dude. like six years now, and I've never played him, and now it, I am. <laughs> like, it paid off. All that magic. waiting. Yeah, he was literally just a shelf piece, just a cool sculpt that I, you know, it I does look really it. cool and. Here's one thing I, I like about it is that I always felt like the Cyclops and G his hands were like way too big, like the size of figures. But now with the new <laughs> scale, the new I scale, think they work, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was just me, but I, they always looked just way bigger and other like looks figures on a normal base. But now new scale, they, they fit right in. see cards with uh, back when like X Men Dark Phoenix Saga set dropped because. We could have had all of the Colossals, all of the X Men Colossals oh, redone at that point. Gross. I yeah. really, you know, it's set in mind of that one. Whiz yeah, Kids done named, it. Uh, what is it? Not Onslaught, uh, Nemesis. His original name, of course, being Holocaust, which is a little too edgy. A little for being, yeah, a little. It's kind of hard much. to like, own a thing that's called Holocaust. Holocaust. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel in like Marvel, they'll ever be recreating though, that character. So Marvel straight up changed his name to Nemesis too, yeah. though, or at least started referring to him as as such. That was that was another Apocalypse funny thing. Weird little alien son inside of like That's a giant suit. I didn't. There's only one thing that I ever saw about the Nemesis repainted him like a, a Lex Luthor armor from Injustice, and I was like, oh, oh that's sure. neat. I was like about it. Like someone cut open the little head and put a like bald dude head in there. I think it was Freak from Iron Man because it was like big enough to like, make sense for like how big the body was. But yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, no, I really like the team. I really want to mess around building with Legacy Apocalypse. Obviously, a few weeks ago, Simi and I talked about him. And we were just like, he's so nuts. I'm happy to see that everybody's playing him and also realize that he is nuts. That's really cool. I definitely, if I built with him, I'd probably put. Lex Luthor on the team just because I'm big, you know, Red Sun Lex guy. I think that works really well. More yeah, bystander shit. That again. combo is really solid. Uh, is there a reason you didn't want to like try to fit room for Alia Gregor on your team since you got all them bystanders, baby? Or I think like, it was think just like it came like where it came down to was like I like Annihilation's bystander generation so much, especially because it's like the pass the torch kind of mechanic where I can. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if I lose that 70 points, I'm not super upset because then it's just like Sakari and Iron Man's generating them every turn. Um, but then, yeah, like the reason why I didn't do anything like Ollie Gregor is just because between Mad Jim, I feel like I need Mad Jim, especially when I'm playing Sakari and Iron Man. I just feel like that's an 85 point team that I just build now. Uh, I mean, technically discounted to a 75 point team because I'm bringing in that cloak every time. Uh, oh, yeah. And then Deadpool, I feel like, is too good for protection so like mad jim obviously gives me two squares of barrier 
but Deadpool gives me like full map protection from range until they like cross the board and get really in my face. So they can still send like a sky tyrant or something over. But like Apocalypse is going to have a bystander he can um, mastermind to. I'll yeah. have you know some barriers to protect somebody. Scarring and Iron Man is going to act at most take what two unavoidable if I really need to do yeah. it. But like honestly, what I've noticed playing Sakari and Iron Man just like tank some of it doesn't really lose that much going down to like click five yeah like i would say take enough damage to click five sure you lose out wit but now you do have a printed three damage so it's five with you know five damage the plus twos maybe don't go to click seven or six because then you go down to a nine attack and that's fun you still have your 17 defense you still have like a lot of good stuff down at click five losing just the outwit i think you know you you let them take damage until then trade the seven of cups card for like the uh super sense card since mad jim deadpool and potentially sakari and iron man could all have that oh it's kind of yeah like you want to do speed and attack oh that's right that's right yeah Yeah. uh but high priestess lets you re-roll a d6 and friendly characters rolls so you know you could have Mad Jim re-roll his super senses. Deadpool re-roll his super senses. Those are like the two easy characters to KO. Apocalypse isn't like super easy to KO, mostly because of that mastermind, but he is really easy to hit. So his bystanders really need to stay like within some sort of range around him. And then Annihilation feel like is easy to KO just because of like the outwit potential. But at the same time, you do have to waste a turn like hitting her twice. And then the follow up mm. is going to be Sakari and Iron Man generating a bystander and flurrying you probably. So, and you did have the whatever eight of cups or whatever, right? The one that lets you free move with stealth, whatever that card is. No. So I went with the, no. um, for the speed, I went with the, uh, the plasticity one, the free. Oh, that's move. good too. Yeah. I mean that for Iron Man. And I guess was it famine that apocalypse is, uh, I think it's Famine that has plasticity. Right. Like, yeah. That for Iron Man is really good. I will say, I will warn you, that card, you know, I don't run a tarot deck. I don't, I don't really think my team could benefit from one. Obviously, the Fool would be like the worst card in the universe to put on an equipment team if you're a heavy equipment team. But, um, like Personally, just not playing with it. Not like I think. That's cool. But uh, that plasticity card has helped me a lot when it's been on my opponent's side. I mean, I've seen people do cool things with it. You know, if they run a lot of Venom characters, Venom Magneto, they all, all that Venom trait is you see plasticity. It's like, that's really good. You know, Venom Wolverine, whatever. Um, but, like, giving that to Sakari and Iron Man is just so strong. It's so, oh, it's, so good. Yeah. It really... For a guy who can already, like... Like, a, like, a free TK, honestly. I mean, yeah. Seven basically squares, the same. For Iron Man, that's seven squares, you know, with the plus two, half, you know, replace and modify. Then he can hypersonic speed after that. That's, like, a 19 square reach just by himself actually not even 19 it's 21 square reach by himself if he chooses hypersonic speed plus that tarot card plus his sidestep it's insane like that's just really good like that's that is so sakari and iron man's best friend i don't know if you're gonna go with the stealth card since like iron Z iron man can choose it and then apocalypse just like has it you know but i think the plasticity card is definitely the better I call i think in that, that situation apocalypse i would say stays back most of the time like i don't think he will oh, sure. be because he really yeah. doesn't have strong attack and damage values He's mostly a support oh, piece that generates bystanders in this, like, 100-point line. So I think, like, really... I mean, I guess, like, alternatively, the stealth card would be able to, like, get him out of the fray as well. So yeah. there is that. But, no, this, this guess, team heavily don't... relies on Sakaar and Iron Man yeah. being able to do damage. I don't know if you can table an opponent with this team just because it depends on how much, how many bystanders you can drop and how much damage Sakaar and Iron Man can do. But I, I... think... All the bystanders really mm-hmm. good. They're just really so. dumb good. That is, that is so insane. And then you pop out like death and war first, right? And then you're just it's money after that. Sure, pestilence next. Yeah. Fam, you know, outwit's Beginning always good. Game, you dra- and I guess you definitely probably drop the death worst. to like equip. Oh yeah. And then yeah, I mean after that insane. you can send death on like its own like little suicide mission kind of thing. His own mission, yeah. Yeah. And eleven for three with precision strike, sure. So Deadpool is like Thanos is just always in the back. Is he in the back with Annihilation, and then maybe Deadpool, Sakari, and Iron Man, some of the bystanders kind of move up, you know, safely move up, or 
be kind of like thinking. Oh, you know, got bystanders in the back. I I think a good map really well, like another playing Apocalypse and not Thanos first of all. But um... oh, sorry, Apocalypse. <laughs> I get my 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 figures that yeah, were useless. Yeah, the legacy before. cards that are good now. The two now that, that they're are, legacy cards, they're good. They're good. They're meta. Uh, yeah. Uh, so like Sakari and Iron Man will have flight, so he can carry people. I think you right. waste an action letting Jim Jasper's like phase if you're going to move him at all. Um, sure. You probably carry Deadpool because then you can free generate the four water terrain markers wherever you dropped him. Uh, you have Apocalypse probably carry like Annihilation or whoever because he has 10 speed and he's colossal. So okay. you can just, you know, carry whatever is like important. But yeah, I, I think the team moves forward fairly good. And then okay. if for whatever reason I need to make like an alpha strike, uh, Sakari and Iron Man's like using sidestep to get one object and then picking TK and then uh, TKing out like a death or something, you know, some oh, booster. Sure. I don't know. That doesn't actually get me a alpha strike at all. Not a huge but, alpha. No, no <laughs> not with the that's seven like speed. halfway into the map. Uh, yeah. But no, like, yeah, I guess this team is not. I mean, all probably played a little closer to the back. I don't let your pogs. I mean, it's pretty tough to score points on i mean I that's say. yeah the main thing like, is let your pogs do the stuff let you Iron let Man apocalypse do mastermind to him as often as like he gets attacked yeah. um if annihilation does get killed then sakari and iron man is suddenly generating him instead and then Rook. yeah you just have Rook. him generate Rook. apocalypse generate um and yeah you just keep them up in your opponent's face because they're max one so as soon as you lose one you're hopefully re-rolling for another but i mean there's not really a bad one. Like famine's like rough because it's in cap. Famine two damage. would have to be the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Pestilence with the up. poison charge. We, we ain't a tie up game right now, boys. We're a we're a big damage oh, that's, damage denial that's the other thing, type though. game. We ain't no tie up. All the uh, yeah. horsemen have flight, so they can oh, also sure, they taxi can stuff around too. All taxi. Yeah. All right. Nice. Solid. Uh, so to go into some games that I was able to play with my team. I'm not going to go super in depth. I will say both my losses at both the rainbow in person and then online. And then keep in mind, I'm not playing the card. The only losses I had were against legacy Thana or God, man, goodness gracious legacy apocalypse. I uh, want us to, uh, Louis, Louis Reyes, um, not secure the bag. It wasn't even because of really legacy apocalypse as of scarab. Scarab really messes up with this team. Scarab combined with the clay and all that stuff really really annoying uh for my team outwitting the defend on green lantern is like well butts to you man that sucks so that was like basically why i say i lost that game again didn't get like wiped but i think it gave up a hundred something points i only killed like mad jim or something like that was it pretty rough other two games i was able to like table a thanos double marvella is great barrier protection great in power easily lets me like chew through thanos's dial helps that he misses all his super senses roll he did roll a five but you know sack man with the uh, precision strike oh baby so good so good uh so that was good and then i think the last game was against x-men that one i kind of threw a sentinel out there because he had the legacy magneto like i make free attacks on robots and I was like, yeah, kill the Sentinel. Come on. You know, you want to. And then it gave, you know, US Agent Flurry right array. And then it just like, it was just, it was just done from there, uh, which is pretty cool. And then also, I think his Venom Wolverine had to try to hit like 22s at one point and couldn't secure it with her 12 attack, which is, again, rough. But that's how high defenses be, baby. And then for Rainbow, I lost against Tristan in a like practice round because I put him on the Weapon X facility and he had Mad Jim and gosh other dude molecule man and the amount of walls and barrier he was able to make was just disgusting and i made i will say i made some bad plays and then i kind of want to chalk up that game to being a specific loss due to tarot cards because he had the increased d6 results by plus one and then i went to kill his felix faust and he i had precision strike and he rolled a five and i was like if it wasn't for that one card you know i was like i could have got at least an extra 30 points and it might have been a little different but it also wasn't a time game so it was really no clue about where the points were at but in the end it came down to like i would have lost that game by the time we uh got ready to play real games and then the real games that happened uh, i forget who i think it was grant first uh grant we previously played with the same team was not able to 
wipe his team, but I was able to wipe his team this time. So I think definitely getting better placement playing wise. The ability to copy Green Lantern is so nice with the Spider Folk. Just to be able to sidestep Marvella, sidestep Marvella, sidestep Mary Jane, all copying Green Lantern uh, gets that free movement that we need since Green Lantern himself isn't able to taxi first turn because he has to equip the Carter Shield. So that's really, really nice. It is a slow team. It is a slow team for sure. Uh, then we lost Lucas. I don't know if it's be- it's not because of Legacy Apocalypse. It's just because of everything else that was going on. Uh, mostly because he stole my cloak right away. Actually, that really hurt with wow. Iron Man. So I think it's, it it's a exactly smart like call. A thing he would do. Yeah, he would. You know, Phoenix Nesters just like to steal things. Yeah, no, we're not. I'm just kidding. I don't care. But uh, but yeah, stealing that cloak right away hurt me so bad. Him uh, number one getting map right. I had a theme. He didn't. He got other the world castle with Jubilee. Then he stole my cloak right away. So I, I like the idea of you just having your little safety cloak, Simeon, because it is crippling. It mad just destroys Iron Man oh, <laughs> so it's bad. Super, like, super. It, he, he's not ineffective without it, but, like, it super no, sucks without it. It's, it's the tempo is way off. Yeah. You know, like, you have, I like, mean, the, even just losing the, the sidestep mobility person. really hurts. Oh, so but, true. I mean, yeah, uh, the, to the me, flight it was, uh, also really hurts. Flight. It was big on Otherworld Castle not having... I only had one person that could fly, and that was Green Lantern. So, Otherworld Castle, John Walker can't fly, he doesn't have leap climb, Iron Man can no longer fly, no cloak. Makes it so difficult to get around, it was awful. I guess Spider-Man 1776 could have charged, but again, it's only a four-square charge. It's not not great. Could have been, I don't know, six, I guess, with perplexes, but it's still not great. So, that was really, ugh, really rough. And so, that was a lost game. Not a wipe. I was able to score some points. I don't know. I got Jubilee. I got Venom Magneto. Maybe some other stuff. I don't know. But it was it was rough. Rough game. Uh, last game was against Tristan again. Like I said, I basically chalked up the first practice round to a loss. Second round, I put him on a team or put him on a map that didn't hurt me as bad with Barrier. But his whole team is just good stuff is good. It's Sky Tyrant. It's Mad Jim. It's Molecule Man. Double Flash. TK and Normal. Idiot. Man, what else is on that team? Sakarian Iron Man with the cloak. I love that team because some other some other stuff. Like everything's a threat when Jim's on there. Oh yeah. It's like, oh, is Sky it's Tyrant the big threat? Is Sakarian Iron Man the big threat? It's like, well, almost everything on this team is a huge threat. Yeah. Just because I have the options to like power action equip somebody. Obviously, you know, Sky Tyrant can't be power gemmed anymore. But you can no. still do like one of the cool swords or something, you know. Right, he he gave him the sword that everybody wanted to put on the sword equipment, and that was the uh, the null sword, <laughs> the all black necro oh, sword. Oh, sure, it was really good. Yeah. You know, no super senses, no shape change. Uh, Giant reach two, very very solid. That's the second crazy, turn. the cra- crazy crazy thing about Mad Jim currently and in silver, I guess. Yes. Um, Ugh. If he doesn't get fixed or like errated, he has power once per game. Choose a friendly character, unequipped character within range and line of fire, and choose an equipment from your sideline. It never specifies points yeah. for the equipment, like no max points. So you can quite literally do the like the infinity gauntlets or uh, the, the cosmic, cosmic cubes, cubes or yeah. like, you know the fifteen point all black necro sword, which previously was basically only played on null. I mean, yeah. most teams didn't Maybe pay fifteen whole bit. points for that sword, but I mean, yeah, it's if you've got little. Mad Jim, why not? It's such a big ask, and at that point, it's like, oh, it's just it's free. So I think that needs to have to like Mad Jim because it's an instant his point value. It's oh yeah, the instant rebate Mad Jim for like a thirty point object for free off your sideline. It's just instant equipped, and it's like, well, yikes! You paid five points for this dude basically, and he can just still do all this other crazy stuff. Really. Uh, so yeah, I went two and one both the broadcast and got third place in the broadcast, and two and one on this event. Don't know what the it ended up being. I think that's really strong. Uh, if you look at everybody else that won for the broadcast, they were all legacy apocalypses, all ran tarot decks. Oh, my my sideline for what it matters is just scroll spies and then people Mary Jane can turn into because I can't use oh, destroyer. Yeah. It's very those are very basic sidelines nowadays. <laughs> like yeah. they don't matter. My sideline if it's in modern is gonna be yeah, Sentinels and Scroll Spies. Yeah, it's like that's that's it, baby. Um, but yeah, so again, I for people that like don't want to play tarot cards or are iffy about them or can't get their hands on that many, you can still do really well without them. Don't feel like you absolutely like have to play them, which is really really cool. Um, I will say like obviously this team, my team could 
greatly benefit from like that plasticity free move card that plus two charge card stuff like that obviously they could still yeah. benefit from and the but, more um, I, you know i will say like with the paro cards uh the more i build teams and then apply tarot cards after the fact the more i like you can for any t- one team you can have like 30 different tarot cards that are good for it so if you oh, don't sure, have yeah. every tarot card you probably still have tarot cards that can benefit your team um but yeah there's there's so many tarot cards that do things that uh will benefit like parts of your team or maybe the whole of your team or just like one figure on your team and it like makes it kind of worth it or maybe it's just something that like shuts down something your opponent has to to be honest um but yeah there's there's plenty of stuff in like the tarot card area where if you aren't able to collect like quote unquote the best of the best that's like right i feel like the the dumbest way to look at tarot cards because really there is no like specific deck build for tarot cards there's no teams there isn't that are really good with certain ones and teams that are really good with other ones so like the two tarot decks that i built for modern and silver there's no overlap like I don't read oh, sure. any of the tarot because one team is completely different and has like certain things that just work a lot better. And the other team, you know, just like I, I require certain other things or get benefits yeah. from certain other things. So, yeah. And that was the big thing we were talking about. Uh, whatever that one time with tarot cards is there is no, a lot of people were just asking what, what are the five I need to buy? And it's like, well, there's not really, five you need to buy they do change on a team by team basis there isn't just the one deck that you put on every single team because of how specific their effects are think, so i don't even think like at this point i haven't found the one card that i would put on every team if oh, i sure. was going to pick yeah. one it would probably be uh that high priestess once per turn each player may re-roll a d6 and a friendly d6. character's roll but that yeah. also gives that to your Pretty opponent. Fair. So there's a good chance that that hurts you just as much as it helps you. If my opponent's playing three legacy site or three legacy apocalypses, and I give them that reroll, that hurts me a lot, a lot more yeah. than it helps me. That's a tough thing. I I don't think I would ever build a, a tarot deck in mind with like let's help my opponent too much. I would just I would usually the best no. way to probably think about it is just does it help me enough? That if it does help my opponent, it's no big deal. That's the big thing. I think the fool card to me is like the biggest where it's like, well, that's, if yeah, I can't use equipment for a turn, does it like kill me? Or will that like usually hurt my opponent more? Like how dependent on equipment am I versus how much I yeah. think other people I mean, kind of especially are. Especially if I'm running, you know, like in the future, not at Worlds, but if I'm running that Grand Prize Apocalypse and then a bunch of X-Men with blades. Oh, yeah. Swords. With like right? Gibson That's blades. a great card. Yeah, oh, I hate amazing. having the fool card on my tarot deck because all of a sudden none of them can use yeah. blades, claws, fangs. I'd like to but counter them. Oof. I'd love to play it against them because then none of them can use Apocalypse's rollout. We did a pretty cool poll on YouTube. Might do more polls on YouTube, but right now we're asking, what are you playing for Heroclix Worlds? I didn't have a great... I just kind of threw this out there. I didn't like my research and check what every single of team has been looking like but i said like legacy thanos legacy apocalypse and x-men or avengers and i said other comment below if you want to so if you guys want to go check out this poll but right now very interesting if 17 percent of the people are playing avengers or out of 30 votes then other 17 percent are playing other but we only had two comments which was jay solomon saying avengers forever this is his uh, avengers or shield so that's cool 23 percent said they were going to play x-men 40% said they were going to play Thanos, and then only 3% are playing Legacy Apoc, Apoc which is really interesting, can seeing like recent broadcasts, huh. like finishes with all the Legacy Apocalypse and stuff. Um, I think maybe the only reason we may not see as many Legacy Apocalypse, because like he is like right now, that's like the fever. He's like the thing a ton of people are playing. It's just because it's hard to get a hold of him. Yeah. Art is expensive, I mean, he is expensive, and Worlds is next week. I you know? think Thanos is hard to get a hold of too well oh, that too but um, i think people have had more time to get a hold of yeah them, you know? i think there's been like all of the ones that were being held well and that's like the thing i think apocalypse is worth holding on to way more than thanos if someone in like offered me right now like i'll buy that apocalypse from you for a hundred dollars and i knew i couldn't replace it for a hundred dollars i wouldn't take it because that's like sure. a shelf piece that i want for life like that's truly i want to keep that apocalypse it's one of the cooler shelf pieces i have all of the two by twos 
are super cool. Uh, if someone offered me, I mean, I don't have the infinity challenge, but like the universe Thanos, I guess if someone offered Gosh, they me, need to change that. They need yeah. to change that so bad. <laughs> if somebody offered me like money for that, I wouldn't care because to be honest, I don't care for the sculpt. I don't care for the dial. I'm never going to play it. It's just a thing that I happen to have yeah. in my collection. Um, I've never even had them on display to be honest. So, yeah. Oh really? Oh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I feel that about like a lot of things. It's like there's certain figures that I'm definitely more likely to have on display. The like super Iceman that's on Legacy now. I'm oh, way more so likely pretty. to have that on display than any of the older Icemans because pretty much like that sculpt was like the the best one they did until maybe oh, like, the Age was. of Apocalypse one. Absolutely. I mean, Age of Apocalypse. I don't know if that's that great of a sculpt. He's like just spiky. He's like sliding. Hey. He's he's sliding, like a little, yeah, a little like swoop. But I mean, he he's not doing like a big like defensive of Ice effect, Man. But I'll have uh, the slide too. Though. All the team base ones, yeah, but it's not unique to him necessarily. Versus the big like infinity symbol twirling defense like shell slide down thing that like Candy X Men is doing, which is just so dope. Yeah, no, I see what you mean. Another thing about like the whole universe legacy. I don't own like the actual Secret Invasion Iron Fist or Iron Man. I own like the classic set, the little three pack that they made of those figures. And those oh, are like no. some of the first figures I ever bought. I think, I honestly think that Iron Man has a strong chance of getting legacy carded in like Avengers Forever or something. I need to go buy one because I'm just like, man, I love these figures and I'm so nostalgic for them. But technically, yeah, they're like classics, like CL 1 is their set or whatever, not like actually Secret Invasion. I want them to change that though. Like if you own. If it's the exact same dial, the exact same figure, just come yeah. on. Anytime it was reprinted. Um, set number. Yeah. Honestly. It's really, really annoying. Even like though the dials are different, um, the mass market versions should have gotten legacy cards too. We should have had like a quad folding like legacy card or something to like, you know, there was an Apocalypse, Sentinels. Um, I think they did, I want to say they did uh, Onslaught also as like a mass market one i don't remember how many were mass market but there's several and it's kind of yeah. sad that like a few people those have been like the ones they've been collecting and like now like you know they they collected the wrong one all these years later yeah right on let's go ahead i think we did a pretty good talk about 300 modern you know if you well i guess we'll shout out really quickly luke's team that was pretty fun he played in a what's it called the map no it was a master mold event they got an extra master yeah. mold so luke, luke, luke up in canada he played X swap. He went three and zero. He won the master mold. This was his team. This is what he swapped into every time. He doesn't say what he starts with. I know he didn't have uh, surface Kate pride. He didn't have the Lockheed bystander. He just won one straight up. So his team basically always ended up being Venom Magneto, Venom Wolverine, Jubilee from House of X, Cipher from Ten of Swords, for Deadpool from Ten of Swords, Hope from Ten of Swords, and a ten point multiple man. He said the team was mostly untouched lose Magneto in the second game and Peeper in the first game. But besides that, it was like very good. And that was his uh, winning for Master Mold, which is really cool. It's like that's another 300 team you might want to look at. Venom Wolverine, super cool. I uh, I really like that figure. Matt Reed also won, not won, sorry, went two and one as well in a broadcast event <clears throat> with much less points than I did. <laughs> so, you know, to, to his credit. But he is rocking uh, Mad Jim with the cake pool. Yeah, really the big ultra on chase on the, cake pool. yeah ultra chase. So yeah that is a big difference he he has the blue version here on brad's yeah thing, but we know a, we know matt was running the pink cake pool yeah and the, the reason we know is because matt's played this figure and like oh, i no, honestly think i like i would not have thought this had matt not been playing it so prominently in like 300 modern kind of stuff i honestly think that this figure is overlooked if i was going to pick one modern figure that I truly think is overlooked. I think it's the Ultra Chase Deadpool at 100 points because you can see uh, that. Yeah, free, choose a character within range and line of fire until your next turn. Deadpool can use the effect of any equipment that equipped to that character, and the chosen character can't use the effect for any equipment. So uh, when Disney Plus dropped, he was doing like Scarab plus this Deadpool plus the Red Wing, and he was making like multiple Red yeah, Wings. Yeah, 100 Red Wings, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, now I'm not exactly sure what he's doing with Mad Jim, but I mean, basically the sky's I mean, the limit. Auto give Red Wing and then swap that out to like Stones of Merlin or sure. any other like 
type yeah, platform generate vertical some, modifier generate some red, whatever, red, ring, uh, red wings uh equip like other stuff you know potentially give deadpool like before you even like start like free swapping you could potentially give this deadpool the uh necro sword for free i mean yeah I mean, like, as a power action but like for no co- point cost um but he, really like the sky's the limit with this guy and then he's got yeah. That's like just the first trait that he's got. He's got like another trait and a stop click. It's tough to KO. The stop immune is yeah hard, man. Hard to KO. Can't get through that. And it like sucks everybody that he's ever damaged in like next to him. And he's got poison and all this stuff. And it's like, all right, all right. I see you, Deadpool. I see you. Yeah, shout out to those teams. You know, mess around with playing some off meta stuff, guys. See how that feels. Obviously, you know, it's built around Deadpool, which is very off meta, but it's still got like Mad Jim whatever scarab very yeah. meta stuff on there there's still good I like stuff that he just that he teams. like found a figure that he really liked and was just like i'm gonna keep building with this and yeah that's really at, awesome. at one point he was doing the deadpool um ultron pym combo or something like along those lines oh gosh yeah i remember like he was going back and forth between those two quite a bit and so like that's another figure that i don't think we see enough of is the ultron pym is pretty good in like a meta where having a theme team isn't uncommon Props, yeah and like it really ruins like if i had played that back in like the kokomo event yeah um the first team that i played against would have auto died because uh, it was like a lokis. bunch of those lokis <laughs> uh, prob yeah so every time one of them probs that they just die like yeah those little 10 point lokis they just yeah. disappear <laughs> so bad oh uh, goodbye guys but yeah those are some offbeat teams you know like what simeon said you know, kind of like what I'm doing, what Matt's doing. You know, play characters that you just enjoy playing. That's that's how I get the most fun out of, like, competitive stuff. Matt just enjoys Cake Pool. He's like, you know, I'm going to play him. That's really dope. I love it. I love when people do well with just figures that aren't necessarily meta, but it's like, you know what? It's just a figure I enjoy. So with that, let's do a little bit of talk about Silver. Then we can do some listener questions. We can wrap up the show here. So, Simeon, there's a pretty decently sized Silver Age side event. That's got some pretty good prizing. So we're going to do a little do justice to silver this is the first like whiz kids sanctioned like silver age tournament which just makes it feel all the more official there's lots i mean insane amounts of good stuff for silver obviously there is a ban list and another important thing is that all tarot not all tarot cards excuse me well yes those are also all legal except for the op kit ones but uh, all the id cards are legal even the ones that were never legal in silver age at all are all legal so that obviously affects oh, really? our really yeah yeah uh, yeah, the ones from like Avengers, Agents of Shield, ones from us or whatever, World's Finest. Yeah, I think World's Finest. And any LE ID cards, not just the X Men ID cards anymore. Every single ID card is legal oh. except for Green Lantern. And okay, then you're Captain saying America they're all legal Agent. minus the ones that they banned. Yes, minus the ones. They oh, okay. Banned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. Oh no, yeah. Sorry. Silver Age, my bad. Silver Age figures fit in like it's still a very well like age bracket. Silver Age ID cards encompass all the id cards right. ever made 2015 minus forward a few. baby yeah so u.s agent green lantern and captain america are banned uh, for fairly decent reasons u.s yeah. agent uh getting rid of barrier for five points uh in a bear as barrier heavy as it is now back then it was not barrier heavy and like no one played the u.s agent id card he's 80 point call in ridiculous but now he's like a good call in and then also getting rid of barrier would be insane uh it would make sam cap like one of the most busted figures i mean she's still great kind of busted yeah, and then Green Lantern and Captain America. Every time someone hit, you get plus one action total, which would just make turns take forever with autonomous and all sorts of other stuff. Anigans happening. Uh, so yeah, kind of get into your silver team there, Simeon. All right. So my silver team, I like it because it's it's like heavily audible kind of stuff. If you like want to like change a little bit of it around. Um, so the first thing, let's see here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the first thing that really like brings the team together, in my opinion, it's a figure that I played in 2018 Worlds, and I'm I really like it. It's one of my favorite figures ever designed because it does something kind of nuts, and by that I mean like not so nuts. But uh, it's Nightshade from the Harley Quinn set. So I'm pretty sure I've talked about this on the podcast before. I know Calder's heard me talk about this figure before. Yeah. Um, Nightshade has a trait that does not matter. But she has a special speed power top dial that is stealth and then free. Place her within hindering terrain within five squares. And then power action, choose a friendly character within five squares and place it in a hindering terrain square adjacent to her. So that can be in front of her, that can be behind her, that can be anywhere that's adjacent. It's pretty solid. 
Uh, the biggest thing is this is like a TK. It's like a weaker version of TK, but it works with two by two bases. So it also technically works with like if I for whatever reason was playing the three by six apocalypse. This also works with that because it's just placing a friendly character adjacent. Um, they have to be within like the five squares of her, but yeah, you can just straight up place something something real stupid big next to her. Um, so that's like her one thing. And then she also has poison and smoke cloud, but that literally has never been used in the times that I've used her. So not super worried about that. If it's on a map where she doesn't have a bunch of hindering, maybe that pops up. I then have between three and four Wendigos. So if you oh. want to play any ID cards, you can play I have four Wendigos. 30 to 50 feral hogs, three <laughs> to four Wendigos. Yeah. 30 to 50 feral hogs in five minutes outside my house potentially attacking my children uh no my three to four yeah. wendigos so if you don't want to play the fourth wendigo uh if you're playing this team and you don't want to play the fourth wendigo you can play id cards such as either of the wolverine ids either of the cyclops ids both decent options i really prefer the professor x id i think being able to call in the xxs professor x mind control people from eight squares away and then move them in range of wendigos is pretty solid um you can also pop on the pin particle tank if you want to mind control and you know well i guess you can't mind control tank people anymore but you can still shoot and tank people so that's all options um i won't go into all the id cards because there's so many characters every time there's an x set that drops there's new id card options every time an avenger or dc set drops there's new id card options um but yeah three to four windows i'm just gonna say four for the sake of the rest of this uh okay Sheriff Strange. So one of my mainstays back when he was legal, 50 points. He has a stop click. He has the bear to battle world key or trait that gives him leadership perplex. Um, he doesn't get to use it to modify anything by plus two or minus two usually, but it's still just traded perplex. Um, he has a trait that is opposing characters must use a double power action instead of a power action to activate ID cards. Is this as good as it once was? No. Is this still useful? Yes. It means that at most, like a character will be able to call in an ID card maybe once every two turns. So it'll be like the third turn if they get lucky with leadership and willpower roll kind of things. Because it is potential with willpower nowadays that um, you could have like a like 50 point whale hitting that like three through six twice in a row and clearing. Maybe. But let's go. Let's yeah. go. Uh, next up, this is my modern pick that really just shuts down a lot of stuff. I feel like this is the best control piece in the game, and that is Dr. Doom, because he can use the mini faces of Doom trait. He can swap into all caps Doom to like lower the amount of actions they have in a turn. He can stay as this Doom to have the dice replacements and the um, time platform, which is pretty solid. He can go to, uh, let's see, the Sorcerer Supreme Doom to like have rerolls easily accessed, which is actually very good for this game or for this team specifically, because one, it has the Mystics team ability, but also two, uh, I'm going to be making a lot of attacks with four Wendigos, hopefully. So being able to reroll every single one of those uh, is pretty solid. It's actually like pretty pretty good. Um, next, I have the Tri Sentinel because. That's an actual retaliation piece, and I like it. Uh, Tri-Sentinel can destroy blocking, make easier paths for people to move through. He can also just, you know, pulse wave if you've damaged one of my characters, which is stupid fun. Um, and then finally, I've got Mad Jim Jaspers. So Mad Jim can not only just change the object that Doom has, which is pretty solid because that can give Doom way more options, um, he can also auto-equip either Nightshade or Sheriff Strange with something. So, like, Sheriff Strange could get the Surfboard or Goblin Glider and have, you know, an 11 for 4 with Precision Strike and Running Shot, which is pretty decent. Um, there's a lot of options with that. So, I think Mad Jim just makes a lot of teams that I'm making currently just because, one, he's mystical, so there's that now. But also, he just he does a lot of stuff for a few points so he's also like my second perplex nightshades my prob um i do have three theme team probs but then uh, i've got dr doom with die replacement and outwit potentially depending on which 
Doom I stick with. So okay. yeah, that's that's an even three hundred if I'm doing four Wendigos, which I personally would probably do. I think in the age of ID cards, it's fine to pick like three five point ones, or I mean maybe the tank and a three point one or something like that. But um, if you don't want to mess with ID cards and sideline stuff, the optional sideline in silver is you've got all of the uh, super friends and super villains. What are they? Uh, trouble alerts and trouble makers. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To go along with that, there is a tarot card that is stupid good with trouble alerts, Ooh. and that is yeah. Let me know. Course, I'm my yeah, it's the Ace of Pentacles. So. It also is stupid good with Wendigos. So every single one of the Wendigos I'm playing has Flurry traded. Or not traded, it's uh, their special speed power. But they have Flurry. So if I have the Ace of Pentacles on the map or on the board and I charge Flurry with a Wendigo, uh, when this character uses Flurry and miss both or one or both attacks after resolutions, they make a close attack. So I could potentially miss three times in one turn with one character and then call out my like Vulcan or whatever I want to do. Um, and I'll probably have two or three options to do this. So like two or three characters that can do this. So it's pretty good. Uh, next yeah, nice. card that this team is like really likes is the Knight of cups. So this is one that I think I kind of ragged on cause it wasn't super good, but in this very specific build with four Wendigos. So Wendigos have, Stop and Vuln. If no opposing character has a wounded token, do not stop during turning the dial due to stop. So the main thing from that is the stop and Vuln thing. Uh, so if there's a wounded token on the map, it gives that basically protected outwit. And then I'm using the Knight of Cups to give characters that can use invulnerability reduced damage taken by three instead of two, which make Wendigos so much worse, like infinitely <laughs> worse. Uh, a stop click with a reduction by three. Uh, that means you have to deal four damage to a 15 point character or you have to do pen damage either way. Um, next up is the five of pentacles. So this is when a character uses charge, modify speed plus two. I know that it's like I'm up to six cards by using a double uh, pentacle card. Right. But... I feel like this is just as good as the flurry one, so I don't really care which one pops up. Being able to have a plus two speed with Wendigos is really good. So that's why that one's there. Also, like if I go to Lord Doom, if I'm playing against somebody that makes bystanders and I go to Lord Doom, giving him a plus two speed when he uses charge, pretty solid. Um, yeah. Then I have the Page of Swords. Once again, this is a Wendigo, Wendigo booster. When a character uses steel energy, they heal two clicks instead of one. That's yeah. dumb. It's really I'm dumb. Flurrying yeah, just... and making free attacks. Do you know how quickly a Wendigo can go up dial if it potentially has a wounded token on the board and makes four successful attacks, Calder? Um, be dang far, but you tell me, Simeon. So, so if far. a Wendigo starts on its, you know, on its 15 point line and it hits all four attacks, it will go from click 15 all the way up to click seven in one so a turn. big eight clicks. Ugh. Ugh, yeah. disgusting. That's nasty. I've never real seen nasty. a Wendigo go from from a 15-point line up to the second plain charge blades line. Ugh. I've seen him go up to, like, the first charge blades line, obviously. I've even seen him go up to the second version of, like, the charge flurry line, sidestep charge flurry. Uh, I've never seen him surpass that. With this card in, in play, it's very possible to get, like, two Wendigos up, like, to a point in their dial where it's just insane to try and like score them at that point because it's 15 points it's still just 15 points even though they're basically at like the 100 200 point line yeah they're almost at the 200 point line at that point um so yeah steel energy heals two clicks instead of one pretty solid even if you don't have all four attacks even if you just have like one or two that are successful still really really solid uh and then we've got 10 of wands so this is my wands card um this is anytime perplex is used, use the, the chosen combat value is modified by plus two, minus two instead of plus one, minus one. So this is simply for the fact that um, I have I have Mad Jim and uh, Doctor Strange, Sheriff Strange, that both have perplex. And then potentially I could switch to a Doom uh, 
that has perplex i believe i can't remember exactly i'm pretty sure there's a doom that has perplex um so yeah it's mostly just the fact that uh there's not a ton of wands that help this team and this is one where giving a wendigo a 13 attack or you know tri sentinel a 13 attack or just boosting damage for a turn it's basically one that doesn't hurt me and doesn't help my opponent so much that it like changes my team kind of layout but yeah i think this is one of the few examples where i think the whoop uh where i think the tarot cards actually drastically change the dynamic yeah of the team. no i think that steel energy card is insanely good oh wow i never thought about that before Tarot is gonna be oof, really nuts and super unchecked in silver age this is i, I think whiskets might be well in for their money on Silver Age for sure with this kind of stuff. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be wild. Uh, I built a kind of wacky Silver Age team. It's nothing crazy. I don't have a tarot card deck with it. I'm sure you guys could probably figure out a good one that would go with it. But uh, mostly I wanted to use the Sam Wilson Captain America Disney Plus Chase, uh combined with the Samantha Wilson Captain America ADW Chase, because I think it's hilarious. Uh alternate universe versions of each other or maybe no it's relation. like the ultimate. yeah yeah obviously not not real universe relation <laughs> uh, but she modifies speed plus three uh whenever she's being carried by someone so the carrier gets plus three speed and then she after she's carried can be given an action which is cool so sam wilson here's got hypersonic speed so he's going to be a 13 speed and he's already a 13 for five naturally with close combat expert uh, and then when he hits he can force blast someone back and he uh, hits them with hypersonic speed, so that's pretty cool. He can also throw out Red Wing, which is an outwit, which is a strike attacker. And also, being carried by the crew is going to be Micron, who, when he chooses to be tiny size, he can just kind of go along with people. They're not being carried. Whenever they're given a move action or power action, you can just place him adjacent to them after the action resolve. So I don't get his empower with Sam's attack, which is okay, but I do get his empower with whoever uh, Samantha Wilson, Captain America, decides to call in, or if she decides to make an attack. That's the bulk of the team. I have Latvarian Village and Mangog thrown on for just throwing Mangog out there. He's sort of bait, I guess. Throw him out there next to a Latvarian peasant. You know, the peasant is first turn immunity. If it all goes well, give him the mastermind, all that stuff. Bait some people out. I'll be like, no, actually, Mangog doesn't take any damage. Very cool. First turn immunity, peasants and whatnot can be kind of cool. I haven't checked the map. I'm pretty sure he can get there with seven speed five speed plus sidestep maybe i had to perplex him up with sam cap i don't know uh but hopefully he can get there at the very least so like that's some fun bits uh the rest of the team is just filled out with id cards you can choose whatever wolverine is always a good one because he's a charge flurry piece 90 percent of the time when you call him in i also like shang chi as an id card a lot uh so that with micron he's a triple target uh charge flurry piece three damage exploit which is also just really really good he can also choose to maybe in-cap people if you so decide. So like, that's also solid. Uh, Shang-Chi's effect is also Precision Strike, gives it to everybody else, and Modify Attack plus one to making close combat attacks. So that is only going to be useful for Micron, since, again, Captain America, uh, Sam Wilson, already has made his attack by the time you get all the way up there. Another card that might be fun is Red Hulk. He gives everybody poison. Uh, just real neat. That could just, I don't know, be really fun. Pop out Red Wing. Red Wing hasn't been moved or placed this turn. Red Wing now has poison. Red Hulk has poison when you call him in. He can poison. I think technically he isn't moved or placed, like, right, when you're called in. with. Yeah, I know you're placed. You're, essentially, um, it's like the same as generated. Right. It's then, it's worded as placed, but right. it doesn't count for the same placed. Then if you, if you do call in Red Hulk, uh, the one from Fantastic Four... As the circle of four trait, which is if he hasn't been moved or placed, he modifies attack and damage plus one. So he'll be hitting uh, an 11 for five damage if he hasn't been moved or placed. And then with Micron next to him, he'll also be hitting for six damage. Really, really solid. Um, I like that a lot. Moon Knight is one I've messed around with being able to be called in because he is 70 points by Sam Cap. So if we're indoors, everybody can use in power. Not great, but it's something. Uh, and then Constantine could also be funny because he gives everybody the Mystics team ability. So next turn, oh, yeah. you know, you give Captain America, Captain America, and then whoever you called in or whatever, John Constantine is going to have it. But also Micron and then also Red Wing Mystics. Pretty funny. This team's not great. It's not amazing. There's definitely better Alpha Strike teams out there. That's a uh, double Samantha, Sam Wilson, Captain America team. Seemed really fun. Micron's really cool. 
some neat shenanigans. And like I said, there's probably some solid tarot cards you guys could throw on this team. I didn't get into that. But yeah, it's been pretty fun. And if I do end up playing the uh, Silver Age side events, might rock a version. Usually I always play some version of Alpha Strike because it's pretty dang fun. I think I'm yeah, getting really the only way a, I little, a little burnt out on modern right now that I definitely want to like incorporate either some off modern stuff like that Sam Wilson cap, then definitely combine it with a lot of Silver Age stuff for sure right now. Like the majority besides Sam Wilson cap, the rest of this team is going to be Silver Age actually excluding whatever call-ins I might be using. But yeah, and then of course, you know, stuff on the sideline. Yeah, that's Silver. Let us know what you guys are building for Modern Age teams or Silver Age teams. I think it's just fun to build, so if you want to write into the show and talk about it, by all means, feel free to do so. Let's go ahead and wrap up the show with some listener questions. There are dozens of us! Dozens! Uh, Brad, because I think it's... Uh, topical what we're talking about is what is up with the dial h discord coming onto my tournament scene and placing in the last three tournaments uh, we're built different baby we're just so good what can we say we bring the heat and no one's ready to dial h that's uh that's what i would say man yeah <clears throat> i honestly i mean i i don't know i don't really care if like competitive people disagree with me i know that like my opinions aren't always taken with uh you know top grain salt in the competitive community. But I will say, I constantly think that the people that play the more casual stuff, the more times that you play random figures and like different figures, the more random stuff that you like find that works. Or uh, I definitely think it makes you a better sealed player because you're not used to being like min maxed as all, like all the oh, time. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, that's not disparaging like competitive players that always play the same thing. But I will say, it does like put you behind on the curve if you're always playing the same team and you don't like adapt with like the new figures and stuff. And so regardless of how good you are with a certain figure, certain type of build, if like something new and completely random comes out, people that constantly shift the, like their builds and like build with new stuff and like add new stuff and really rearrange their teams, they're always going to have an advantage. And I'm not saying that dial H specifically causes that or has that, but I will say, being the more com- uh, the more casual podcast, yeah, um, no, I think I... yeah, I think we tend to like err more on like the the line of being on like the cusp of new fun pieces that people aren't expecting, kind of thing. Right? Yeah, you're not prepared for it. You know, I blindside you. Yeah, That's how it goes. It's it's like when people uh, when people would say like murder machine has potential, when in reality it was always vulture all the time and. Murder machine yeah, never went don't in. Don't lie to us. Those kind don't of lie people. Like that. Uh, Euroid Jack asks, "What is the craziest purchase you've done in Hero Clicks related?" Craziest I've ever done was and it was just crazy, awesome all around in Kansas City or I guess Missouri, Independence, Missouri. I bought for a hundred dollars rest of this store's collection of Hero Clicks because they wanted to get rid of them. They were selling them throughout the morning, and right at the end of the tournament, they were like, "Look, hundred bucks gets it all. Take it. We don't want it." And I ended up like profiting a thousand dollars by just selling that. Not even in the best way. I sold it to like Cool Stuff Inc. You know, which typically you would probably make more money if you were to sell it to people that would cover shipping and then also uh, pay like highest price for it versus you're going to sell it to someone who is then going to sell it. I got that GameStop, you know, a little bit less. But I still, with that and then taking it in store credit. Honestly, I didn't even take insert credit for all of them because cool stuffing is awesome and sends it friends and family on PayPal, which is so nice. Um, I like, profited like a thousand bucks. I literally got three humongous tubs of hero clicks. I had to like sit in the back because it was just an insane amount of stuff. But, uh, it was awesome. It, it did take days to sort through all of it and get it all organized in order to sell it. But it was still uh, definitely the craziest purchase I've ever made. Uh, Simeon, what about you? Sorting through it all is like my favorite part, though. Oh, it's um, so fun. It is super fun to like organize it all. Yeah. But sometimes like it's, it's, it's a like, headache. Oof. But if you're like I'm in a comfortable sitting position, then it's True. like, it's fine. Um, I will say, TV. watch some TV. Wonder Woman 80th was the set that I bought the physical most of, like a single set. Mm. So that was the craziest out of like a single set that I've ever bought. Uh, my craziest purchase, Hero Clicks adjacent, was I spent like. I spent $175 on a Cthulhu Colossal. Which oh, is like a horror, horror clicks figure. Yeah. 
and so it's not even compatible with HeroClix. Other than the fact that it has like a dial, it's not even HeroClix adjacent. Um, but it's it's so cool that like I and it was so hard to like track one down that like when I finally tracked one down for what I considered a reasonable price, I just like pulled the trigger instantly. Um, I did the same with a Spectre. So I did buy, I bought one person's like getting out of the game kind of thing, uh, where it was mostly like older figures, mostly pre-carded figures, but he did have like a Spectre. He did have like some more of the light stuff. Um, it wasn't until I, so I, I think I gave him like 150 bucks, which with the Spectre and like enough of like the super rares and stuff, I definitely like had my money's worth. But it wasn't yeah. until I got home and started going through everything where I realized he had, like, probably five times as many cards as what I had figures. So there was a lot, oh, weird. A lot, a lot of, like, generics that, like, he just did not have included yeah. in the box. And I, it wasn't, like, a thing where I was like, hey, I really want this, like... Uh, star sapphire recruit and this blue lantern recruit and this yeah. indigo tribe bat like i didn't care that much but at the same time i was i was like man kind of sort of the same thing yeah kind of could have like, uh, sold like all of this like a lot easier if been, i had a big been nice, pile right? of stuff uh, that was like another big thing that when i bought that collection of hero clicks there's a ton of like mixed match stuff so like i had all the cards for the Excalibur team base None of the figures, none of the dials, no team base. And I was like, well, it's a bummer for someone out there. They got a nice shelf piece, uh, I guess. That and like had the card for the Ultra Chase White Rabbit with the little uh little pog, oh, pog standard pop thing. Out, yeah. yeah, and just no white rabbit anywhere. And I like I asked him that same week, I was like, Hey, do you guys like have a white rabbit? Just probably wouldn't have asked if it was like anything but like an ultra chase or a super like sought after chase but like he's like no we don't i don't think we have it anywhere like i think i gave it to all of you i'm like all right i'm not gonna be chintzy and be like yeah give me that white rabbit how dare you not include that white rabbit with my stuff that's worth a lot of money it's like yeah dang bummer there was no white rabbit in there it's like yeah and i've like thrown away like for rare i don't know a face a bunch of other super it's just had no cards same thing a ton of like cool cards that had no figures bummer um, old Andrew Klinger Kling Sauce asks Spotted Cow or Youngling? Youngling, I mean, I think this is more in yeah. line with your it's intro. A, a beer question. Um, that's too broad. That, okay. that question's too broad. So, like, typically, I will say Spotted Cow, uh, but Youngling is like the oldest brewery in uh, like America or something. I can't remember what their beer says. It says something like that. They're, I think they are the oh. oldest still running brewery uh, in America, like traditionally American or whatever. Okay. But I will say the youngling, youngling, whatever, however you pronounce it, um, that I'm most familiar with is like their lager. And I'm just not super into pale lagers. And by that, I mean, I would rather drink almost any other oh. thing. I mean, you know, Simeon, they don't get a lot of sun up there in Canada, so most of the loggers are pretty pale. I mean, so, it doesn't this isn't come, Canada. But... This is um, Youngling, I think, is Wisconsin. I think these are both Wisconsin. Think... In that I case, they're know. both disgusting. Sorry, people from Wisconsin. Yeah, I, I can't remember where it started. I don't know. But yeah, it's... I, I'll say Spotted Cow 90% of the time, but Youngling does make like a couple like off brand not their typical kind of things that are decent it's just not their like their original like if you said like uh anheuser bush i would immediately think bud light because that's their most typical beer you don't even think oh, sure. budweiser anymore literally when they made a seltzer they called it bud light seltzer because bud light is the epitome okay. of like what that company has become First. budweiser is no longer like their mainstay their big thing they are not Budweiser, the company. They're Anheuser-Busch, home of Bud Light. That's funny. It's yeah. really weird. It's stupid. Uh, I hate it. Yeah. All right, Andrew. More of a not really a youngling guy. I don't like killing Padwans and a lot of cows. I like Angus. And then not in that the case. the oldlings or the women. Yeah, not the oldlings, the, the women. Too. <laughs> Manlings, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, even though some Angus cows can have a bit of, a bit of spots on them. You know, white. Gosh, I can say that. That's what we usually call them, but I literally, I don't think I can say it on the podcast. But yeah, there's a, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Spotted Cow. And Jones from Down Under. Comes from a land down under. 
where women go and men run the ben jones asks opening boosters we've seen some creative ways to open them in dial h videos chainsaw slashing of claws burning freezing etc what is your usual way to open boosters are you rippers eat openers when doing sealed also do you open from the top of the booster or bottom oof i've almost always opened from the top of the booster yeah the bottom has one, actual glue or whatever yeah top is just tape so the hard mode bottom opener i will yes. say um when i'm trying to be neat i'll use a knife and i'll pop the tape and like unfold the tab but at a certain point through a brick or like you know opening boosters uh, i get to the point where i'm just like tired of it and i just yeah. start like grabbing it and like tearing tearing the cardboard as like you would like a pop can opening kind of thing um and it, yeah it's always from the top and it's not the neatest way i will say after opening a case or something i will go back through and like also pop all the bottoms so that i can fold them all flat oh crush them yeah, yeah. i used to do that too that's very easy very nice I've started doing I used to always cut with like a knife, but then I was like, okay, cut one side of the tape, cut the other side of the tape, open. Just felt like it took forever. It just, yeah, it feels you know? like it's so long. So what I do now is I take a booster sideways and I just rip it totally out the side. I just tear the cardboard completely down the side. That way I don't have to like get the tape either when you open it from the top, which usually you don't even have to fight it that much. But I found it so easy just to totally I mean you just destroy an entire booster this way. So you can't put your figures back in it. If you just totally rip out the side, super. I mean, that's what I've just found out. It's just super quick, and yeah. it's what I do. It. It's not neat. It looks a little, little I've grotesque. Done it that way as well. I don't know. Yeah, but it I've gets done the job it that done. way as well. Um, you don't damage anything that way. Like, oh, there's not really don't. a wrong way to open a booster, honestly. As long as like the oh. contents aren't um, completely destroyed. But yeah, uh huh, uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I will try who dipping one of like liquid nigrogen to. The that would be just, hilarious. Like, tap the tape with good like, a little busters, hammer, dude. Hilarious. <laughs> um, Luke, Luke, Luke asks, and I really like this question. I think it's really cool. If your state was a team ability, what would the symbol and power be? I kind of guessed mm. one for Nebraska, but what do you have in mind? Nebraska's for the symbol or the symbol? power? The symbol. I've kind of guessed, but I think this <sighs> is really gonna be man. So when I think of Nebraska, I think of like flyover. So, oh, okay. My <laughs> my initial reaction to this question would have been like a little airplane, and it gives like you know the user like a flight symbol or something, because uh, sure. it's a flyover state. But honestly, that could be a ton of I different states. Though. That's so, not like specific to Nebraska, though. You know what I mean? Nebraska, like, like when I flyover, when I really dive deep in like Nebraska history, Nebraska like actuality, the first thing I think is like cool about Nebraska is Kool Aid, like the Kool Aid Man. That is, that was invented in Nebraska. So it was like, it was. The, oh, so it was okay. the Ruben. So it was the Runza. Cool. The Runza, like, yeah, no one really cares. That's um, all right. But like, the Ruben's a cool sandwich. That's fine. Um, I think it's also Nebraska technically has more miles of river than any other state, which is oh, really? wild to think about. But yeah, yeah, it's actually got like more technical miles covering it of river than That's any other cool. state. Um, maybe yeah, something like, with like dolphin symbol or whatever. Yeah. I mean, even though that's not what, like something that really for, people think about for a landlocked to state to have, but kind of um, cool. Another like crazy thing that I remember from school is um, the 911 system was developed in Nebraska back in 1968 or 1967. Um, Cause like that was, I remember learning about that when I was a kid and then immediately going home and calling 911 to see if it oh worked. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> and then I, like when they answered, I just hung up yell at you like, you can't do that. Yeah. I just like hung up because I was like, Oh, it worked. And then they We're called back and my mom story. answered and was like, Nope, everything's fine. Nope. I swear everything's fine. And I'm just like sitting in the corner like, Oh no. Oh no. What did I do? Oh, uh, <laughs> so then the last thing is like Omaha's home to like the college baseball world series. Uh, for whatever that's worth. But if I had to pick a symbol, so it wouldn't be like the river thing, because honestly, that was like something I barely remember. Um, the 911 thing, again, like I don't think anyone thinks of us when they think of the 911 no, system. I don't think so. No. No one really cares about that. This I is really say, neat trivia, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say like the college baseball World Series, anyone that's into that would think of that. And 
the Kool-Aid thing. So I think the Kool-Aid thing is probably like the most fun one. Okay. If we could co-op the Kool-Aid man like symbol, just like the glass jar, like, oh, yeah. And you give them improved blocking, uh, like improved movement destroys blocking. Uh, and then also... For only one square of blocking. First, the one for wall reasons I won't through. say you give them mind control, but it deals one... Oh no! That they used <laughs> no, to for reasons I won't oh, say, no. but you probably know. Yeah. So yeah, that's my answer. The Kool Aid Man. Dang. All right. I think Pretty it was cool. Hastings. Hastings the best because they I have will the Kool Aid days, uh, and you can go there and get those... like one of every flavor. Oh, I bet there's just so many more flavors people just aren't even aware. Oh, like, when they actually so get there. Many. Like when you go to like a Coke store or something, it's like, oh, look at this. And it's like, what? Yeah, you go there Don't and like, that. it's like $15 for like this mug, like a large size mug. And you just go to oh, like gosh. different like booths and get like, here's grape, <laughs> double grape, grape, grape. And you're like, what is that? Man. And they're like, oh, it's so much grape. It's technically illegal. And like only okay. if you really like grapes. And then you like, you <laughs> drink you it and your, your pupils turn purple and you just like. Oh baby, wake up days That's later. That's the good stuff right there. Yeah. Um, no, not gonna lie. I was gonna say either a big red N for Nebraska or just oh, corn. Huskers would have made sense. That would've... I was. I was purely thinking either just corn or a big red N for Nebraska. Yeah, now that I'm. Um, now that I'm rethinking this, uh, chimney rock also too. like I think that made our state quarter. So. Oh. Probably okay. would have. Even though now it's like it's no longer a chimney and it's more of like a mound. Erosion has destroyed the chimney portion of it, so okay, cool. depressing. I mean, that too. <laughs> uh, for South Dakota, there there were quite a few that came to mind, but almost right away, I just kind of think Mount Rushmore with South Dakota, even though I you know don't live that close to it, but I do like Mount Rushmore. I think it's kind of neat. I like a uh, crazy horse and stuff too. We just kind of like making statues inside of mountains, so. I think just a big George Washington stone head would be like our symbol for it. It's like basically the best I got. I think that looks fine or uh, or crazy horse. Either either stone face works. I think Mount Rushmore is more well known. Then I was honestly going to give us something to do with blocking. But since Simeon chose something to do with blocking, I'm going to choose something else. Uh, maybe honestly, because uh, our state motto is under God, the people rule. So maybe something to do with leadership. Where it's like if you know, if you leadership on this character, they remove two action tokens instead of one. I mean, that could be really solid. So here mm. you go. You know, or adjacent friendly characters have plus one to their leadership role. It's kind of neat. Has PD uh, the first time they KO somebody using the ram ability. Um... No, 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 Oh, not gonna get it. Don't didn't like it. Don't agree with it. Didn't like the situation. Doesn't mean I want to talk about. Sorry, it. that's the first thing I think of when I think of South Dakota. Oh man, or we could do the the meth. We're on it. The orange oh, South yeah. Dakota state. The orange. How yeah. much money did oh. they spend for? That? Oh, a ridiculous amount. And they paid people not even from South Dakota to make that ad. It was a Minnesota I can't complain company. About that though, like I can't make uh, fun of that because we literally spent ten million dollars, like eleven million dollars sending the huskers to ireland for no but simian go huskers go football big football fans yeah you know the land of corn the homeland of corn and nebraskans everywhere make it here uh south dakota if you're a past theme team get plus one attack and value because that's all people ever care about is like the deadwood tv show or we haven't been relevant for years no something like fun like that maybe if you if you won april Modify attack and damage value plus. Well, that'd be way too good. But if you won, like, yeah, maybe if you win map roll, you get plus one attack. I don't know why. I think just kind of cool. But yeah. All right. I think this is a fun question, though. I really like this idea of trying to figure out, like, what your state's most known for, what, like, it kind of encompasses, whatever. Yeah. You can't do ability for it. If you're it. listening so, and you want to write in and tell us your version of your state team ability. I think that'd be a Ooh, fun segment. We could get, I would love to read all these off too. State abilities for every state in the the bring union. It, also, back Puerto Rico state, because uh, I don't care what you believe. I think it's a state and it should be. Yeah. So you could look don't at, be one of those idiots like, uh, that like 
there's the Puerto Rican flag and be like, look, it's Captain Puerto Rico, actually. Captain America <laughs> came before they changed their flag to that. So predates that flag that time. Symbol is the Captain oh, America no, shield. no. That would be so bad. Like people that like post that dumb meme. No, dude, it's cringe and it's wrong. Please stop. And it's also eight years, ten years old at this point. Please stop. But yeah. So yeah, if you're Puerto Rican, Hawaiian, Alaskan, all those ones that aren't necessarily connected to the, the actual continental United States. Still, though, do it, because it'd be really cool. It kind of brings back to the, the Dial H for Hero Clicks, like, World Initiative or whatever it was called. We tried to find someone from every state and every country. Yeah, that's how we got, like, four Russian listeners. Oh, totally, They're definitely yeah. not bots trying to steal our identity or anything. They're <laughs> Abs- actual no, listeners. No, totally not. Russian Calder listening to this, like, how the hell deals with the Aldi or something? I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> He's learning. He's learning. He's adapting. One day, he'll, he'll come to America, and it'll just all sound totally different. Yeah, no, seriously. That's a good idea, Simeon. Write in. And where can they write in? You can do it at facebook.com slash dialage for hero clicks. Message us. A lot of people message us on Facebook. Please feel free to do that, you know, with your state or with some other questions. It'd be really cool. We like to hear both. Same thing. You write in on Twitter, twitter.com. So it's dialage4. That's the number four hero clicks on Twitter. So once again, same dealio there. All these questions were sent to us on Discord. The only way to get on our Discord is to be a $5 and up Patreon member on patreon.com slash dial H for hero clicks. We have a ton of really cool stuff. Behind the scenes looks at videos, exclusive videos that are just Patreon only for five bucks and up. We have a lot of really sweet stuff we give out. And on higher tiers, you can get awesome action tokens and stickers. Really cool stuff. And then just our Discord community is so incredible. I love it. I think it's worth definitely easily worth the five bucks on the Patreon. You can also send us an email at dialageforheroclicks at gmail.com. That is all spelt out. But yeah, let us know any cool state team abilities you have or any awesome questions you may have for Simeon and I. Those are all our questions. That is our show. Uh, we're just counting down to worlds. We're just getting excited. So just building yeah. teams and all that fun stuff. We're one week away. So yeah, that's all I got to say, guys. Absolutely. Uh, if you've got you've got wild dreams out there, you know, of like winning worlds maybe you need to you need to load up on figures you need to load up on tarot cards whatever options it is that you need for hero clicks you know who's got them cool stuff inc has them so uh yeah check them out coolstuffinc.com you can get all the coolest and latest hero clicks singles and sealed products you can get all the tarot cards equipments uh even some of the golden silver age stuff that you might need or want if you're trying to gamble on what's going to become a legacy card like we do yeah where to check it out coolstuffinc.com reminds me we got to do our avengers forever legacy picks those are almost yeah. all revealed so we definitely need to do that sooner rather than later yeah we need to figure oh, out like always left, like four or five uh three have been seen so nine is it 12 usually i have no idea yeah. anyways happy trails so if you're looking for emotional satisfaction my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks no are you serious Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools, it's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack some. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails. Funny banter. Uh, Do you like how I, I slipped in uh, wild dreams in there? Because, uh, well, you know, yeah, because uh, yeah. Key Swift just dropped like like the the best album of the year, Wildest Dreams. Yeah. Oh, did you did whatever uh, James tell you about that, or did he send you that? <laughs> he told me to bring Literally. it up, but I I had no I idea like, how to bring it up oh, naturally. It slaps. <laughs> I, I was like looking at the text, and I'm like. No, he can't. Uh, I, I even clicked play on it and just started playing Wildest Dreams. And I'm like, no, right? Like, he, there's no way this is the he's first not, time he's yeah, heard he's this. He's not being song. serious, right? Like, like this can't be real. No. Uh, yeah, I was like, I had to wait. I didn't even, I didn't respond to that text. And I was like, dude, he's, it's a joke, right? Like, you haven't heard, you've heard Wildest Dreams before. Like, you've, you've heard of Taylor Swift. Like, so it so caught me off guard. I guess he's, he did it one other time to me before, but I actually didn't hear the song. So yeah, I was the buffoon in that one. But like when he sent me Wildest Dreams, like, oh, all right, like you, you know this. Come on, don't, don't play me like this. 